So, welcome to the lectures on engineering mathematics 1 and today we will uh, be talking about the differentiability of uh, two variables functions of two variables and this is lecture number uh, 12. So, we will introduce first the differentiability concept for the functions of two variables and then we will derive necessary conditions for differentiability and also sufficient conditions for uh, differentiability. So, just to recall the differentiability of single variable which we have learned in the previous lecture. So, there were three uh, concepts we have used to define the differentiability of a functions of single variable. So, one was the existence of the derivative. So, if this limit f x plus delta x minus f x over delta x exists which we call derivative of the function f at x and it was denoted by f prime x. So, if this derivative exists we call the function as uh, differentiable. The second concept which is more general and uh, we will indeed now use this uh, to derive differentiability of uh, functions of more than one variable. And in this case we have uh, seen that if we can uh, express this uh, delta y which is the change in delta y when we make a change uh, of delta x in x. And if we can express this change in terms of this d y plus epsilon delta x, the d y which we call differential was a linear term in delta x and this was a times delta x. Here the a was independent of delta x and this epsilon term must go to 0 as delta x goes to 0. So, the third one was useful for testing the differentiability and what we have seen that if this quotient here uh, delta y uh, minus d y over delta x and when we take this limit delta x goes to 0 is 0 then we call the function differentiable. So, this was just uh, uh, a consequence of this relation when we have taken this uh, d y to the left side and divided by delta x taking this limit since epsilon goes to 0. So, we get this relation out of this relation, but this was useful for testing the differentiability in many cases. But what was uh, the point here that all these three uh, definitions are equivalent for differentiability. So, the existence of the derivative we have seen uh, that imply implies the differentiability of a function of single variable. But today what we will observe that the existence of derivatives which uh, we call the partial derivatives with respect to x or y uh, that is not uh, sufficient for the differentiability of the functions of two variables for example. So, here just to define the differentiability of uh, functions of two variables we uh, take this function z is equal to f x y and this is said to be differentiable at the point x y a general point x y. If at this point we can express this change in z. So, now we have this z as in dependent variable on x and y. So, x y here are independent variables. So, if this change in delta y is equal to a times delta x plus b times delta y plus epsilon 1 times delta x and epsilon 2 times delta y. So, this is just the extension of the definition which we have used for functions of one variable. And now in this case again this a and b they are independent of delta x and delta y and this epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 uh, they must go to 0 as uh, delta x delta y goes to 0. So, again we have this linear term and then this quadratic or the nonlinear rather nonlinear term because we do not know the what is the dependency of delta x on epsilon 1 and epsilon 2. So, we have the linear term here and plus this rest. So, again here the a and b are independent of delta x and delta y and epsilon and epsilon 2 are functions of delta x and delta y such that this epsilon 1 is equal to 0 when we take this limit delta x goes to 0 and delta y goes to 0. Also this epsilon 2 uh, when we take this limit as delta x and delta y both go to 0 epsilon 2 uh, must be 0. So, this linear function again which is a delta x plus b delta y 
is called the total differential. We have also introduced in case of uh, functions of single variables. So, here this is called total differentiable of z at this point general point x y and this is denoted by delta z. So, now we will denote this by uh, d z which is the linear part of this expression and delta uh, z that is the change in z when we make uh, change uh, in x and y by delta x and delta y. So, this d z which we call the differential term or the total differential this is equal to a delta x and b delta y that is the linear part of this uh, change in, in z which we can also denote because we have observed yesterday that delta x or d x they are the same because they measure the change in x and in this case because we have two variables. So, the delta x and delta y or d x or d y they make uh, they measure the change along the x and the y axis while uh, this delta z is uh, the change in the function value whereas, this d z is different which uh, is the change in in the uh, along the tangent plane in this case in case of one variable it was along the tangent line. So, if this delta x and delta y are small enough then this d z which is the differential of uh, z at this point will be a clo close approximation or will be a good approximation of, of the change in delta uh, change in z that is delta z because this nonlinear term here for small values of delta x and delta y that will go to 0 and we will have a very good approximation by this linear term or at least in the neighborhood of uh, the point x y. So, the geometrical interpretation of the differentiability. So, what we have seen in case of a uh, function of single variable that uh, at this point x 0 the value of the function is f x 0. So, this is the tangent line that means, if the function is differentiable we have observed that we can draw a tangent line or in other words we can approximate this function in the neighborhood of this x 0 point by uh, this tangent line. So, as we see here in the graph as well uh, in the close neighborhood of this point x naught. Uh, we can have a very good approximation by this tangent line at least in the close neighborhood of this point x naught. In case of the functions of two variables, so we have a similar uh, argument or the extension of this concept. So, if suppose there is a point here uh, x naught y naught and then in this case if the function is differentiable then we can approximate in the close vicinity of this point by the tangent plane. Uh, in case of single variable this was tangent line and now we have the function of two variables in this picture and then we can uh, approximate by this tangent plane which is actually the linear part which we have seen in the definition there. So, what is are the necessary conditions for differentiability we will derive now. So, if this z is equal to f x y this function is differentiable that means, we can express this delta z is equal to a delta x plus b delta y plus epsilon delta x plus epsilon delta y. Then we will show that the function is continuous and has partial derivatives with respect to x and y at that point where we are talking about the differentiability. That means, here that this continuity and the partial derivatives the existence of the partial derivatives at x uh, y point with respect to x and y these two are the necessary conditions for the differentiability because we will show that the differentiability implies that f is continuous and the partial derivatives exist at the point x y. Moreover, we will also see that this a here which is the constant free from uh, delta x and delta y this is nothing but the partial derivative of f with respect to x at that point and this b here is nothing but the partial derivative uh, of f with respect to y at that point. 
So, let us prove this. So, if we uh, assume that this f is differentiable that means, we can write down this delta z here which is uh, we have made an increment here delta x and delta y in x and y and this difference is nothing but the delta z. So, delta z we can express as a delta x plus b delta y plus epsilon delta x plus epsilon delta y the definition of the differentiability. So, having this now if we take the limit here as delta x goes to 0 and delta y goes to 0 what will happen uh, since delta x goes to 0 and a is a finite number. So, this will disappear. So, and again this will go to 0 here also since epsilon goes to 0 and also delta x goes to 0. So, this term will go to 0 and also this term will go to 0. So, we will have simply when we take the limit delta x goes to 0 and delta y goes to 0 we will have that the limit of this f x plus delta x y plus delta y as delta x goes to 0 delta y goes to 0 is equal to f x y and this is nothing but the continuity of f. So, to show the continuity we take uh, a point in the neighborhood and then uh, we take the limit and this should approach to the function value x and y independent of this how we approach to this x y point by taking this delta x to 0 delta y to 0 along any path. So, that was the continuity here of f which we have proved. So, what we have assumed that if f is differentiable then we can express it in this form and simply by taking this limit we have seen that the function uh, must be continuous if the function is differentiable. So, next we will uh, continue the necessary condition the second one. So, we again assume that f is differentiable then we can express this uh, delta f or delta z in terms of a delta x b delta y and this epsilon and epsilon 2 and now since delta x and delta y are arbitrary we can choose uh, in the neighborhood anything here. So, what we have set if we set delta y equal to 0 and then divide by delta x then what we will get. So, we will get uh, this here x plus delta x and then delta y is 0 minus this f x y and divided by delta x. So, that will be equal to so, here uh, a will remain and then uh, here delta y is uh, set to 0. So, this term is 0 and then epsilon 1 because we are dividing with delta x and this term will go to 0 because we have set delta y to 0. Because this is uh, again we are in the neighborhood of this point x y. So, if we are talking about a point here x y. So, we have set just delta y to 0. So, again we are in the neighborhood along this x axis uh, by having this delta x not equal to 0 at, at this moment here and so we can we can do that we can take any delta x and any delta y and this relation must must hold. So, what we have done we have taken delta y to 0 and then divided by delta x and now we can we can take the limit of this delta x as it goes to 0 and what we will get this is the partial derivative the definition of the partial derivative of f with respect to x and this will be equal to. So, we have taken the limit here both the sides. So, the limit uh, delta x goes to 0 and here also then in this case the limit delta x goes to 0. So, a is independent of uh, delta x delta y. So, this will remain as a and this epsilon term will go to uh, 0 as delta x goes to 0. So, we will get this relation that f x is equal to at x y is equal to a. And now, similarly what we can do we can set delta x to 0 now and then we can divide by delta y and again by taking the limit as delta y goes to 0. So, we will get um, that f x y uh, sorry f y x y is equal to b. So, here if we take this limit now delta y goes to 0. So, the right hand side will be just b because epsilon 2 will go to 0 as delta y uh, goes to 0. So, in this case we will get that the partial derivative of y at x y is equal to b. So, what we have observed now that if a function is differentiable uh, in that case the partial derivative of x 
uh, at this point x y will exist and that will be nothing but uh, this number a here which is appearing in the de definition of this differentiability and also the partial derivative uh, with respect to y at that point will exist and the value will be b which is appearing here in the definition of the differentiability. So, what we have uh, seen now that if uh, a function is di differentiable then it must be continuous and not only continuous, but the partial derivatives must exist at uh, that point where the function is differentiable. So, these are the necessary conditions for differentiability. If one of uh, the conditions like uh, the function is not continuous or one of these uh, two partial derivatives uh, does not exist, in that case we can uh, immediately uh, claim that the function is not differentiable, because these two are the necessary conditions, the continuity of the function and the existence of partial derivatives. So, if one of these conditions is violated, then we can uh, immediately conclude that the function is not differentiable, but if the function is continuous and also the partial derivatives exist at the point x y where we are talking about the differentiability. In that case, uh, we have to go for the further test because these are the necessary conditions. Based on these two conditions, we cannot say that the function is differentiable or it is not differentiable because these are the necessary conditions for differentiability. So, now we will uh, move to the sufficient conditions uh, for differentiability and in this case, if one of the partial derivatives of z exist and the other is continuous at a point x y, then the function is differentiable at x y. So, what we have uh, now for the sufficient conditions that if one partial derivative exists and that is anyway necessary condition for uh, the differentiability. So, we uh, must have the existence of both the partial derivatives for discussing the differentiability. So, this is natural now, because this is a necessary condition that both the partial derivatives exist. So, basically for the sufficient condition we have to check that if one of uh, the partial derivative is continuous, then the function is differentiable at x y. So, we need continuity of uh, one partial derivatives and the existence of both, because uh, the existence uh, is necessary condition for the differentiability. So, we suppose here uh, that f y exists and f x is continuous. So, in this case uh, we uh, will now observe what is this delta z, the, uh, the variation in this z when we vary x by delta x and y by delta y. So, we will consider this difference now and we will see whether we can express this difference in terms of uh, that linear function plus this epsilon delta x plus epsilon. Uh, to uh, delta y. So, here now moving further we have f x plus del this term and then we have subtracted this f x y plus delta y and we have added the same here f x y plus delta y minus f x y which was already there in the difference. And then uh, since we have taken here the existence of f y and continuity of f x. So, we will use these two conditions to prove that the function is differentiable. So, the existence of f y implies that this limit here f x y plus. So, here this is the partial derivative with respect to y. So, that means f x y plus delta y we, we will make an increment in y and minus the function value at that point divided by this increment delta y and taking this limit delta y that this exists. That is the meaning of the existence of f y that this partial derivative exists. So, this is equal to f y. And now, we can uh, use that idea which we have used in the previous lecture that once the limit is given we can define or we can introduce some uh, epsilon uh, that means uh, that f uh, this x and y plus this delta y and minus this f x y over this delta y is equal to or, or with minus sign here. So, minus this uh, f x y we can set as epsilon 
in this case we will take this epsilon 2 and then later on we will introduce epsilon 1 as well. So, if we set this difference to epsilon 2, then we know that when we take the limit as delta x or in this case only this delta y goes to 0, then this epsilon 2 must go to 0, because when delta y goes to 0, this is nothing but exactly the f y at x y. So, this we will introduce now and then we will multiply this whole expression by delta y and we will get that this difference is equal to uh, f y delta y plus epsilon 2 delta y. So, having this we will get this f x y plus delta y minus this f x y is equal to this delta y will be multiplied to the right side. So, we will have f y uh, x y and plus this epsilon 2 which we have introduced here and this delta y. And note that this epsilon 2 which appeared here now must go to 0 as delta y goes to 0. This is the condition because of this limit we have observed. Next, now we will use the Lagrange mean value theorem. So, just to recall what was the Lagrange mean value theorem, we have a uh, function which is continuous and differentiable in the open interval a b. So, here f b minus f a over b minus a is equal to uh, this quotient will be equal to the derivative at some point in the interval a, a b. Yeah? That was the, the Lagrange mean value theorem. We have uh, studied before and now. So, using this Lagrange mean value theorem to this difference here. So, notice that here f x plus delta x and f x. So, y is unchanged. So, y we are not changing y plus delta y here also y plus delta y. So, this is with respect to x only the change is in x and if we divide. So, this is like f b minus this f a here a is x and this b is x plus delta x and divided by the difference which is b minus a. So, in this case this will be delta x, but we will multiply to the right side will be delta x and the derivative naturally with respect to x because we are talking about with respect to x the y is unchanged. So, f x the partial derivative and at which point here the xi was between b and a. So, here also this argument will vary between this x and x plus delta x. So, we have introduced this theta 1. So, that this will be precisely between x and x plus delta x when theta runs between 0 and 1. So, this theta 1 here is between 0 and 1 when this is close to 0 this argument is close to x and when this is close to 1 this will go to uh, go to x plus delta x. So, exactly which uh, xi was doing here in the open interval a b we have this argument x plus theta 1 delta x for this theta 1 0 uh, and 1. So, we have this the Lagrange mean value theorem now. And now, the continuity of f x because we have assumed the continuity of f x and the existence of f y. So, this continuity of uh, the partial derivative f x we will apply here. So, if f x is continuous and we take the limit delta x goes to 0 and this delta y goes to 0, then this f x x plus theta 1 delta x y plus delta y will simply go to f x at the point x y this is what we have used now. So, the continuity of f x will give us that this uh, derivative with respect to x will be f x at x y point. And then again we will introduce another epsilon as we have done before. So, that is f x and this uh, x plus theta 1 delta x y plus uh, delta y is equal to f x at x y plus this epsilon and this epsilon will have property uh, that this will go to 0 as delta x and delta y goes to 0. So, now out of this we get this relation now that f x plus delta x and y plus delta y minus f x y plus delta y 
is equal to delta x is multiplied and f x uh, x y plus epsilon 1 delta x. And now, so we are here now f x plus delta x and y plus delta y minus f x y is equal to we can write down as delta x times f x at x y plus epsilon times uh, delta x. Oh, well, and now what we have we have these two uh, relations we have proved that this difference when we have uh, variation here is delta x and y is unchanged y plus delta y. This was because of the continuity we got this relation and because of the existence of f y we got this relation. And having these two, so remember the delta z we had written by subtracting and adding to this difference here and now we will replace this f x plus delta x y plus delta y minus this by this expression and this f x y plus delta y by this expression here. So, we will get now by substituting these that delta x f x delta y f y plus epsilon delta x plus epsilon 2 delta y and epsilon and epsilon 2 goes to 0 as delta x delta y go to uh, 0. That means, the existence of f y and the continuity of f x these two conditions we have proved that the function is differentiable because this is the definition of the differentiability and we have used to arrive to this expression uh, we have used the fact that uh, the uh, we have used uh, that the function uh, derivative with respect to y exists and the function derivative with respect to x is continuous. So, just a remark that the function uh, may not be differentiable at a point even if the partial derivatives f x and f y exist at p. Why? Because the existence of partial derivatives at the point p is necessary condition this is not sufficient for differentiability which is written here existence of partial derivatives is necessary condition. So, they cannot guarantee differentiability. On the other hand a function may be differentiable if f x and f y are not continuous because what we have observed that the continuity of f x or f y or both that is the sufficient condition not the necessary condition. So, the function may be differentiable if f x or f y or f x and f y are not continuous because this existence of partial derivatives and continuity of the other the existence of one partial derivative and the continuity of other these two are the sufficient conditions. So, let us go through quickly uh, two problems. So, here find the total differential and total increment of the function z is equal to x y at the point 2 3 for delta x is equal to 0 0.1 and delta y is equal to 0 0.2. So, the total increment is defined as f x plus delta x y plus delta y minus f x y which is equal to. So, this is x plus delta x and y plus delta y we can uh, use this z now z is equal to x y. So, this is our function uh, f x y is x y f x y is uh, x y. So, in this case we have here the product of this x plus delta x y plus delta y minus this product here x y and then we can open this. So, x y and then x delta y delta x y delta x delta y. So, x y will get cancelled and we will have this expression and then we can compute this uh, delta z at this point 2 3 and the delta x is given 0 0.1 delta uh, y is given uh, 0 0.2 and this will come 0 0.72. Now, coming to the uh, differential which is d z del z over del x d x plus del z over del y d y and in this case del z over del x is y and del z over del y is x. So, we have this expression now uh, to be computed at this 2 3 point with delta x 0 0.1 delta y 0 0.2.
So, note that this dx uh, dy is, is nothing but delta x and delta y because these are independent variable for independent variables these notations are the same dx is equal to delta x dy is equal to delta y, but for dependent there is a difference which we are going to observe now here and this d z the differential of z now at this point will be 0 0.7. So, there is a difference naturally on delta z and the d z, but when this delta x and delta y are small numbers then they will be a good approximation to each other here or d z will uh, approximate well this delta z term. Another problem we will show now that this is differentiable and write down this total differential. So, to show the differentiability we will use this basic definition uh, of uh, expressing delta z in terms of this a b and epsilon epsilon 2. So, this delta z is nothing but this difference here and then we can compute this because this is uh, our f x y. So, here we have substituted this x plus delta x and y plus delta y and this is f x y which is given as x square minus x y and minus x y square. So, we can open now here the square. So, x square term will be there 2 times x delta x term will be there delta x square term. Here also one term will be x y. Here also there will be a term x y square. So, these terms will be cancelled and the other we will collect together. So, we will have uh, these many terms this is coming from uh, x plus delta x square other than x square because that was cancelled out. Now, these terms are because of this product here there will be 4 terms, but one will be cancelled here and there will be 6 terms. So, we will have 5 terms here because this x y square will be cancelled. And now, we will try to, to get uh, the coefficient of delta x and the delta y and plus uh, in terms of epsilon delta x and epsilon delta 2. So, here if we take common delta x, so this is 2 x from here and then y from here and then we will get uh, delta x from here also y square. So, this is with the delta x term and from delta y we will get x from here and delta y is appearing here too. So, del 2 x uh, delta 2 x y with delta y. So, this is the linear term which we have collected and the rest we have uh, kept in this format that with delta x whatever the coefficients here and with delta y also we got this one. So, what we observe that we can introduce now that this is our epsilon 1 and this is our epsilon 2 and they have the property that they will go to 0 as delta x and delta y will go to 0. And this one is the, the total differential term and since this a and this is b in our notation and they are independent of uh, delta x delta y. So, we have a into delta x b into delta y epsilon 1 delta x epsilon 2 delta y. So, we can express this uh, z this function in this form. So, the function is differentiable and its total differential will be given by this linear term which is uh, written here 2 x plus y plus y square d x and x plus 2 x y d y. So, this is the differential. So, coming to the conclusion now. So, uh, we have discussed that this function z is said to be differentiable at the point x y. If at this point we can express this delta z as a delta x b delta y plus epsilon delta x epsilon 2 delta y where this epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 they go to 0 as delta x delta y go to 0 and also this number a and b they are independent of delta x and delta y. So, the necessary conditions we have studied they were continuity of f is necessary for differentiability and the existence of partial derivatives uh, of f x uh, and f y at that point where we are talking about the differentiability. So, these two are the necessary conditions and for the sufficient conditions we have seen that the continuity of the partial derivatives of f x and f y are important and or in other, other words we can say the existence of one and the continuity of the other. Meaning, the continuity of one is, is, uh, is sufficient here because the existence anyway we have to have to discuss the differentiability because the existence of partial derivative is important is necessary then only we can talk about the uh, about the differentiability. So, basically the continuity of, of one partial derivative uh, is, is sufficient for 
for differentiability. These are the references we have used to prepare these lectures and thank you very much.